Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Mani Padme Hum. 
Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, glorious to the assembly of devotees, Jai Om Vishnu Pada, Paramahamsa Parivaraka Chai, Ashtata Satisha AC, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Kota Vaishnavinda Ki Jai, Namacharya Shlahidasa Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Sikaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Ki Jai, Prabhu Nichananda Shri Rita Virata, Shri Vasudhi Gaurakta Vinda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath, Shamakunda Radha Kunda Gopadana, Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki, Shri Mayapur Dham Ki, Jagannath Puri Dham Ki, Ganga Maya Ki, Jamuna Maya Ki, Tulasi Deva Ki, Bhakti Deva Ki, Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki, Lord Chaitanya's Harinama Sankirtanam Ki, Brihat Madanga Ki, Shri Prabhupada Ki, Shri Shri Gornitai Ki, Harinama, thank you, Tan Ki, Vihat Madanga Ki, all glorious to the assembled devotees, all glorious to Sri Guru and Grand Lord God, Sri Sri Prabhupada, Nama Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prashtaya Vukle, Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani, Namaste Sarasate Devi, Gauravani Vachari Ne Nivaste Shishunyavari, Pastor Chari Shatari. Hare Krishna, good morning, good evening. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, let's see. Um, today we'll carry on. Um, some of you were with us a few days ago. We read from Nectar of Instruction. We'll, we looked at the first verse a few days ago. Today we'll look at the second verse. So if you have your Nectar of Instruction, you can open it if you wish. And we're going through the second verse of the Nectar of Instruction today. And if, if Vasik and Nandaprabhu can locate it and put it on the screen and we can chant it together. And the first verse is the um, basic, we could say, basis for those who are practicing Krishna consciousness and related to our position in the material world. General um, principles were mentioned in the first verse, most of which are in regards to the conditional situations that we find ourselves in this material world and how to deal with those conditional situations of our tendency to, um, you know, whatever, become angry sometimes, our mind becomes disturbed, uh, we have a tendency to talk a lot, a tendency to um, eat a lot too sometimes, and tendency to the stomach to be, we want tasty dishes, and the stomach to become nicely filled up with uh, various things, and the sexual appetite. These are various, uh, should we say, pushing senses within the material world. And some advice there how to deal with those pushing senses has been given by Sri Prabhupada and Harasharis. Today we're going on now to the, let's say, the, the, the aspect which helps us to come a little bit more towards our constitutional situation. Because as long as we're in a conditional, tomorrow is the appearance of Radha Kun. So it's one of the reasons we're discussing active instruction in this month. The appearance of Radha Kund is one of the events which we honor. Um, and so to come to that platform of entering into Radha Kund, which in one sense we could, one could say, the reason active instruction is an, an objective goal, um, is a matter of constitutional, it's not, it's not conditional. As long as one's on a conditional platform, we have material desires, and we have a conditional perspective of things, um, of various kinds, independent type of mentality. There's no a con a conditioned soul cannot enter into Radha Kund. It's only when we come to our constitutional platform, um, and of course, according to what our constitutional platform is, that one can enter into that mood or that atmosphere of Radha Kund. Otherwise, we remain in our conditional situation with imperfect understanding of the nature of the absolute imperfect understanding of our own natures, etc. What to speak of Radha Kund and um, the behavior of pure devotional service. So today's verse is a very significant one, as the first one in this direction to um, help us to come to that uh, constitutional st stage of consciousness and not just mixed. Most people are in completely conditional stages, some degrees mixing are there, but hardly you find anyone who's on the constitutional platform. It's very, very rare, such a pure devotee, to give their association. So is the verse ready, Masika? Mm -hmm. 
first on text number two. I think it's now coming here. It is nectar construction, text number two. Um, we'll read line, line by line together, please. Atyahara Prayashascha Pajapo Niyamagraha Janasangascha Lolyamcha Shadbir Bhakti Vinashati Atyahara Prayashascha Pajapo Niyamagraha Janasangas Chalolyamcha Shadbir Bhakti Vinashati Atyahara Prayashascha Pajapa Niyamagraha Janasangas Chalolyamcha Shadbir Bhakti Vinashati Ati aharaha, overeating or too much collecting. Prayasaha, over endeavoring. Cha, and. Pajapaha, idle talk. Niyama, rules and regulations. Agrahaha, too much attachment to. Or agrahaha. Too much neglect of. Janasangaha, association with worldly minded persons. Cha and Lolyam, ardent longing or greed. Cha and Shadbihi, by these six. Bhaktihi, devotional service. Vinashati, is destroyed. And the translation of this verse by Rupa Goswami in this Upadesh Amrita. One's devotional service is spoiled when it becomes too tangled, entangled in the following six activities. Eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. Over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Three, talking unnecessarily about mundane subjects. Four, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. Five, associating with worldly minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. And six, being greedy for mundane achievements. This is a very, um, important verse without applying this um, like we know what our describes without applying these six principles in their lives we cannot make advancement in spiritual life we remain in a conditional state of consciousness so we'll go through a little bit some of the things that Prabhupada has mentioned the purport we'll not read all the purport quite extensive purport but we'll read some of the things. You may not be able to follow them on the screen at this point of time, so I don't know if there's any point keeping the verse on the screen um, because it's a piece of one verse, one sentence from here, one from there. So we'll start with the first sentence, however. Human life is meant for plain living and high thinking. It's interesting in these purports of Srila Prabhupada, all these comments of Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada oftentimes establishes like a, let me say, a foundation, not necessarily directly going into the subject, but the foundation of why the subject matter is so important. And because of the value of human, in this case, the value of the human form of life. 
uh, which is specifically meant um, for God realization. Conditioned souls do not see it like that. Conditioned souls see human life nothing more or less than simply a form of life to try to enjoy, to try to sort of fulfill one's material desires, seeing oneself as the center. This is generally the conditioned soul's perspective, purpose of life. And even if they follow religious, some kind of religious allegiance, their concept still remains central to themselves of God is a supplier to fulfill my conditional needs, be they in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance. But basically, everything is about fulfilling my, fulfilling my personal conditional needs. So an act of instruction, is, especially this verse, and consequent verses, is to help to transform this conditioning which we have in this world and to free us from that condition so we can start to see things from a constitutional point of view, a permanent point of view, spiritual point of view. For those who don't want that, then these type of statements are unwelcome or misinterpreted, misused, but they're not practically applied. This is the sacrifice, this is the process of surrender, which in the human form of life, the human being has the other forms of life do not have this opportunity. Only in the human form of life, the conscious will to transform is possible. Transformation takes place just like conditioning takes place by association and by certain behavior practices. Transformation requires a certain association, a certain process or practice in order to evoke that transformation of that consciousness. And if we're not applying that process, the transformation will not take place. Both are needed, the association and the appropriate behavior within that association is required in order for transformation to take place. Imitation will not work. And we have to know what is the appropriate um, situation for our level of conditioning and act accordingly in a way that Gradually, there's nothing impossible. It can happen immediately also, but generally, gradually the transformation takes place. So that's the value of human life. It's meant for simple, plain living and high thinking. It doesn't mean stupid or primitive, because unless one, I'm, I'm just like, one body just returned yesterday, maybe the day before from home, coming from a fairly educated background, qualified, he went to see his family. And his, at least his father was saying, we're wasting your time, you're an intelligent person. You know, you could be doing engineering, you could be doing computer technology, you could be doing so many things, you're qualified. You're wasting your life like this, being a so-called devotee. You're wasting your life. So you should use your intelligence. But we here, we may accept or not accept, Krishna, Bhana, Trisha, Krishna, Intelligent persons in this age of Kali worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, along with his devotees, at a performance of Sankirtan Yajna. Intelligent person. Why is it intelligent? Because most of our endeavors in this world, whether we're engineers, doctors, or unemployed, whatever we are, um, identified as, most people's purpose of whatever they're doing is to try to satisfy their desires and try to avoid suffering. <clears throat> and other things too, maybe they're experiencing some kind of loving exchanges, have a peaceful life, whatever it is, different things along those lines. But we see, it's not difficult to see, that life is a constant struggle to achieve those without actually reaching one's objective goals. Temporary relief sometimes. But people aren't reaching it with all their so-called intelligence. The blind are leading the blind. False hopes. So intelligent person will realizing that, that is actually achieving the goal of life, this material endeavor. It's not achieving my actual goal. An intelligent person won't continue to do the same thing that other failures are insisting one should do. And that's a sign of madness. So the intelligent person, according to scripture, 
form Sankirtan Yoga. Another aspect of, you could say, this plain living and high thinking um, is being situated in one's position and acting accordingly, following the various guidelines for one's own position. Is being steady in one's own position is considered to be um, piety. And to imitate another is not. You see in the Ishupanishad, Prabhupada writes there, Ishupanishad warns us we should play the part designated to us by the Supreme Lord and not to imitate others. That's simple. Of course, things in Kali Yuga are so complicated, even something simple becomes complicated because we're not in a simple environment. And not everybody will see it simply. So maybe your motivations or you know, whatever traumatic perspectives are there in this age of Kali, um, you know, we're more or less very hard to live actually a simple life in, the, in this age, even if one wants to. But in principle, it means playing one's part, just like it's very simple for a dog to bark. You don't have to train a dog to bark. I don't think they have barking schools for dogs. Do they have barking schools? I don't think they may have barking schools for humans, but not for dogs. Dogs automatically bark, as probably you've noticed. Or cats meow, birds fly. They don't take much to, to them to automatically act according to their nature. That's called simple living. Acting according to one's nature. It's not being stupid. It means finding one's nature and acting accordingly. For Arjuna, in normal circumstances, for instance, to, to fight is simple. For someone like me to fight would not be simple. Um, for someone who's actually a Vaishya to do business is very simple. It's not complicated. For someone who's not a Vaishya, then business becomes a very hard work with complication. Everyone has that somewhat Nankali Varna Shankara has resulted in so many confusions as to our nature and so on. But in principle, everyone has a certain type of nature and they're more comfortable when they act accordingly. That's simple living. And they, because they don't have to spend all their energy, mental and physical, trying to achieve their purposes because they're naturally situated, or at least in a conditional sense of the term natural, more naturally situated. So they can spend the, and their energy then is therefore more peaceful to practice spiritual life. Uh, but we find ourselves in a very difficult environment uh, in this regard. So how to do that? Well, one of Prabhupada's principles is to try to create an atmosphere which would be more favorable. We have a little way to go yet, I guess. Um, if we go a little further down or further into the, um, the purport, um, a, again, Prabhupada's setting precedence to this verse. We should understand that ultimately everything is owned and controlled by the Supreme Personality of God. And he has many energies. He has an Antaranga Shakti, which is his internal energy. And his Bhairanga Shakti, which is the external energy. And then you have the Tatasta Shakti, the marginal living entities, who have this choice of being under the control of either the Antaranga or the Bhairanga Shaktis, internal or external energies. That minute choices there with each and every individual living being. We're unaware of that right now because we're under the influence of the Bahiranga Shakti, the external energy of the Lord. And consequently conditioned by the modes of nature therein to see things according to our particular condition. We're not correct. It's not a correct perspective. It's a relative perspective, but it's not an absolute perspective, no matter who we are. We only have a relative understanding of the truth. So we have to hear from the Antaranga Shakti or the internal energy if we want transformation to take place or let's say elevation of consciousness beyond the material modes of nature to speak of emancipation or freedom from the modes. Um, so that requires association with the, the internal energy of the Lord who appears in this world through the media of pure devotees, Shastras, bona fide scriptures, sadhus, and sometimes the Lord himself comes, accompanied by all of his various shaktis. Um, but we have, some or another is by association that we, you know, that this awakening can take place. And in that association, we will see certain directives 
Some are general, some are specific. Directives on one's spiritual path. And, and from our perspective, it's to the degree that we, as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. So whether we surrender or not, maybe we're trying to follow something beyond our adhikar or something below our adhikar. It's not having the necessary effect that is required um, for us to progress and to get out of the influence of Maya. But these energies are there, um, and the li living entity himself, living entity themselves, um, have this, um, this opportunity. But unfortunately, in this day and age, the proverb starts to talk about the different types of uh, association. Um, especially when we talk about uh, the advice to associate with the Mahatma for this transformation to take place. A great soul, uh, for Krishna advises in the Bhagavad Gita on several occasions, we should um, receive this um, direction, this guidance from the self-realized soul. This is how the knowledge is passed down from pure soul to the next, unbroken succession, discipline succession. But unfortunately, um, not everybody is so broad-minded. Most people are cripple-minded. They're called duratma. Duratma means basically um, cripple-minded persons who are identifying themselves with this material world, some kind of ism. This can occur all walks of life in religion, in politics, in social dealings, national dealings, uh, gender, everything it, it, it comes up generations, every single type of behavior or condition that people are in, they tend to identify and protect their identities. And even in the spiritual path and in the preliminary stages of spiritual life, this kind of situation is there. So society is arranged in such a way as to try to um, not exactly facilitate, but yes, to a certain extent, we can say facilitate these particular conditionings, at the same time purify. If it's not just about facilitation, like in Varnashram, maybe facilitating people according to their natures, uh, designation, if you want to put it like that, Shudra, Brahmins, Vaishya, Kshatriya, etc. That's one thing. But uh, the main point of it all is to purify, to elevate their consciousness beyond, as Lord Chaitanya said, Naham Vaishya, but I'm not a Brahmin Shatri Vaisha Shivno Brahmachari Vihastavana Prastra Sanyas. To gradually understand or, or, or by proper association and behavior, our actual position is the eternal servant of the servant, 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 servant of the servants of the Lord. Uh, but that's a long way off for most people. Uh, so society is arranged in such a way as to at least elevate our consciousness towards more goodness and gradually becoming enlightened about these things. The nectar of instruction specifically aimed, as Prabhupada said, towards neophyte devotees, beginning devotees, to help us to come to the advanced stage of devotion service, from A to Z, sometimes we say, to help us progress towards the highest goal of spiritual life. But if we associate with cripple-minded devotees, devotees, we could say, persons who are still maintaining these things, our advancement will be according to our association. So we, have, we really have to be serious about our association. And not just that, but we also have to be serious of taking the, the relevant instructions which are for our purification or freedom. They're called the regulated principles of freedom in the Bhagavad Gita, the Pantamos. Regulated principles of freedom most people think they're quite the opposite. They think the restrictions are actually uh, in, in, inhibiting our freedom. Mm -hmm. Most people think like that. Why so many rules and regulations? Why so many rules and regulations? You know, we're inhibiting our freedom, even our freedom of thought. You know, everything. You're subduing my intelligence. Um, whatever all sorts of different objections may be put forward um, against following various rules and regulations. But of course, to follow rules and regulations simply for the sake of it is also not the goal. And it's not a concoction either. We make up our own rules and regulations as modern society 
to a large degree does, and they are based on some original concept, but to a large degree we're compromising and making our own rules and regulations about abortion and this thing and that thing, um, and not realizing the consequences of our godless behavior. <laughs> Absolutely godless behavior, you could say. Um, divorce, so many things which are just commonplace in our modern society, and maybe even amongst us, many of us have experienced these things. It's just Kali Yuga's ocean of thoughts. But uh, in reality, these things do not have a place in, in, uh, in a cultural Vedic society. You know, Kali Yuga is a very difficult age, no doubt about that. Um, and people are basically educated and trained from birth to think that life is meant for sense gratification. Now, that's not what the Bible time says. We read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, our human life is certainly not meant for sense gratification. It's meant for God realization or Jiva Sita for Jignas. Inquiry into the nature of the absolute truth, that should be the goal of all of us. Um, from the Srimad Bhagavatam. But that's not educated. We certainly don't hear that from our parents, and that's from a devotee family. Um, a spiritualist family, and we certainly don't hear it at school or in college or on the television, or generally not even on the, on our endeavors on social media. It's very very rare to encompass this. If someone tries to preach this at school, we end up like Palladmarsh in a pot of boiling ghee or something. Uh, we'll be very much, very much uh, um, admonished for such uh, philosophy, in the material world, Kaliugas very much a materialistic age. So um, people are basically direct. They're just interested in either direct sense gratification, probably says, or extended. Even nationalism, family, looking after the family, it's just extended sense gratification, that's all. Looking after one's, you know, nation, human society, whatever. It's extended sense gratification and nothing more or less. That's all it is. It may be seen as being very admirable. People may glorify you for such nationalistic heroism, so to speak. And you may be awarded with a Victoria Cross or some Nobel Prize, um, whatever it is that they, they, they award each other with, some PhDs, you know, something or another like this. But it's, it's actually just sense gratification and so on. Um, and the purpose of human life is to get, it's a quite a striking thing, but to get freed from this bondage of being bound up, following one's own personal sense gratification. It's, uh, it's a hard one. Imagine now, I think we, I don't know if it's settled yet, the election, I think I know, the election in America has been going on between one candidate and another, or one party and another. But it basically makes no difference. Both parties' only agenda is sense gratification. One blue sense gratification or red sense gratification, which one do you want? You want the blue one? Now you had enough of the red one, let's have the blue one. Um, like that, you know, just try the blue one, and then after another one, two years, let's go back to the red one. But it goes nowhere. Material sense enjoyment is like that, one thing after the next. Never ending in this material world. There's no satisfaction. Okay. So, um, it's fine. Whatever. I'm just working out. We're giving a little class. Thank you. The, they have no spiritual value whatsoever. Only if they're guided from that hunter and the shakti or from a spiritual platform, the manifestation of Krishna's mercy in this material world. Um, because the material world itself is in the form of Krishna's mercy to facilitate those who don't want to, um, let's say, relate to Krishna favorably. And Krishna mercifully gives us this material world to be an illusion about our identity. But for those who have the inclination to, to wake up or to return, revive their spiritual identity, um, then the Lord appears in various ways to give us the opportunity to again associate through the presence of bhakti, through the presence of devotional service, 
um, even though we appear to be stainless material, to the extent that we accept or that we take the association of Baki to that extent, we can progress to a constitutional situation. Uh, let's see where we go from here. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, probably continues to explain actually how what the effects of being under the Bahiranga Shakti are and being Duratmas, following Duratmas, the blind following the blind. So, mm -hmm. Uh, in this material, and everyone going down into a ditch or into hell as a result of following blind following leaders, etc., is that we suffer the threefold miseries of material existence. Mm -hmm. There's no way out of it. Battling to try to avoid the threefold miseries, which miseries which are caused in this world by our mind and our body, and it's quite prominent right now with the coronavirus um, probably everyone in the world has probably heard of this virus by now i would imagine and many people are very afraid of the virus a tiny tiny little virus but very powerful effect apparently many people are very afraid whether they have cause of fear is irrelevant but they're very afraid and many people are suffering from the effects of the say of this virus and as of now, there's no real answer. Lockdown and masks and distancing and so many external things, but they haven't found an internal thing yet, as far as I know, to deal with this virus. Um, and it's the same thing with all. The virus can be seen in a very interesting way because they haven't found an internal solution. And they know the actual solution is internal. We have to find some vaccine or some drug which will counteract the virus. So, Similarly, living enders are busy. This material is full of fear and suffering. Are so busy trying to solve their problems in this material world, but they find no solution. As Palama said, their efforts to find a solution are worse than the problem they're trying to solve. They create more problems. And we don't, we don't have a safe future. We're not taught fortune tellers, but we can see that the effect now of the coronavirus, and they're worried about you know, economic problems and mental problems and social problems, and political problems also. So many things related to that. I want to speak of health problems. And uh, so many problems come back. <laughs> one thing leads to another. But they haven't found the internal one. Similarly, we have to look for the internal solution, the internal vaccine, which the problem made it quite clear in one natural conversation. I don't know, but no amount of material endeavor will solve the actual solution to these problems. The only vaccine to uh, pr pr protect us from the disease condition of material life is the Sankirtan movement, Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan. This is our only protection. That's where we have to look for protection. It's not, it's not that we're going to make a materially perfect situation which is going to solve the problem. That's only so much useless endeavor if it doesn't create or awaken our relationship with Krishna. So Varnashram itself is also useless if it's not Daivi Varnashram, if it's not God-centered. It doesn't help people to, to progress on their path back to God. It is also useless. So this is, suffering cannot be avoided. It's the constitution, as Krishna says, um, in this material world. Vashashvatam, Dukalyam Vashashvatam. This material world nature is Dukalyam place of suffering we have fear everywhere, everywhere fear is the underlying let's say presence in terms of effective conscious presence in this world is fear always afraid of death always afraid of others afraid of this thing and that thing losing things most of most of the world's uh, say development is based on fear principle of defense housing but also another aspect of it, somewhere to stay, you know, basically the whole world is based on fear. And then temporary, a shashvatam, it's a short-term experience. Of course, the ongoing sojourn in this material world may, may go on to countless, eternity, almost not eternity, but what appears to be unending until we change our, 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 our tune a little bit. 
this unending, unending journey, this sojourn in samsara cycle goes on ever, on and on and on. It doesn't just include threefold miseries, of body and mind being one or caused by other living entities, constant one, just like the virus in a sense is, is the misery of the body and mind, it's also caused by another living entity. Everything is related. It's not just one only, only, only. And all of course, living entities can include humans, it can include viruses, it can include animals, it can include insects, it can include any any being and so then there are the ones of the inert miseries you could say is the inner miseries which we experience and there's miseries coming from from um, other conscious entities and then there's the inert ones such as earthquakes and hurricanes typhoons or whatever you call it, cyclones and so many other weather problems external things which are ultimately controlled by krishna but through the demigods and their material energy around us, the antaranga and the bahiranga shakti, or the material energy, creates so many varieties of, of um, you know, frustrations and fears and sufferings for the living entity. Because we don't really belong here, it's an unnatural situation to wake us up. So all those kind of natural disasters, et cetera, fall in that category. Um, and they're all connected, of course, because sometimes the conscious living entity utilizes the unconscious energy of the Lord to create unmiserable situations for the living entities, be they climatic, be they even fire weapons and various things to cause trouble to other living entities. They're all connected. So that's not the only thing. We also have the privilege of being born, of getting old, of dying and getting diseased, which most people are not very enthusiastic about. Maybe being born in many people's minds sounds very very romantic and very sweet oh, what a beautiful little baby because they don't necessarily know what's going on inside the mind of that little beautiful baby so to speak what to speak of when the baby's in the womb um babies cry because they're so ecstatic i guess maybe not but uh, you know, there's a lot of crying when you're a baby when we get older it, it manifests in other ways through different emotional expressions but as a child, it's mostly crying and throwing a tantrum and this and that. It's not generally a sign that we're in ecstasy when we start crying. There is an ecstatic crying, but not on the conditional level. At that stage, it's not. It's because of want. We're suffering. We want relief. We're either suffering from hunger, thirst, or something other living entity biting us, or we're just feeling so uncomfortable in that body. It's just unbearable. All we can do is scream and scream and scream. So, especially in a human life, this is quite a prominent experience. Um, okay, we'll move on a little bit down, down the purport. Um, so, yeah, so these main problems confronting human society of birth, death, disease, and old age cannot be overcome by any pure focus. They are everywhere in Upper Mabu, Vanalo, Everywhere in this material, Krishna says, is a place of repeated birth and death and suffering, even in Brahmaloka. It is temporary. Baba sometimes tells a story of that one great sage. It's called the Hairy Sage. What's his name? Sanskrit term, I've forgotten. He's a hairy sage, and he had hairs all over his body. And every day of Brahma, one hair would fall out. Well, he lived quite a long time, you can imagine. That sounds like he'll live long more than that. It's just a story. So uh, one time, some of his disciples, because he, he had no, he didn't even, have, didn't even have a hut or a kutir to stay in. He just lived outside. So his disciples said, Ramaj, please allow us to build you some kind of kutir, some kind of hut. And he said, what's the use of that? And we will not forget every day. He would only die when he had no hairs left. So every day of Brahma, one hair would fall out. So he said, what's the use of this? I'm only in this world for a moment. <laughs> for us, that's like inconceivable. But from another perspective, it is. It's all a flash. Why waste our time in things which are not helping us to become God conscious? Because that not to say that the hut may be useful for living entities need some kind of shelter, no doubt. But in his case, he was just giving an example of the temporary nature of this world, why spend all your energy in that regards? 
We have more important things to do to attain God realization. Go back to Godhead. Um, let's see, according to nature's arrangements. Yeah, well, probably then gives a comparison between human life and, and animal life or other species of life. So God provides automatically for the other species. They've got a certain need. They're not so complicated as human beings. We make so many extra needs. We create our own, you know, anarchas, unnecessary things. I mean, wherever you look, just if you're looking at the picture of my body, so to speak, in this room, you'll see things all around you. You'll see a map on the back behind me, I think. You'll see some files. You'll see some filing cabinets. I don't know what else you can see. Maybe that's about it um, because those things are too small. But all these things are creations where present needs or we think are needs. They're not really necessities in normal, simple society. Filing cabinets, files, maps. Maps may be useful, but this is a planning map. All these various things are not absolutely required. In front of me is a computer. There is a safe. Um, there are many other sort of types of cabinets and this thing and that thing, forms and lists. All these things are because we're, you know, in a very complicated situation. They're not absolutely required um, in society. And animals don't need all these because they're following nature's arrangement for them. Their karma has given them that situation. Their food is provided. Their accommodation is kind of nature's arrangement. The birds have their nests, you know, the squirrels have their holes in trees and the moles have their holes in grounds. And, you know, the food comes, worms and this thing and that thing and leaves and fruits are naturally provided by God. You know, they don't have to work hard for that. They, they have to work for it. In other words, you have to get it. It doesn't work in their mouths. But they don't have to like them get jobs to get money to buy it. This thing and always worried about the tax. So many different things. There's no such thing. Simple, very simple. Human life is, of course, is not quite like that, but it's, it is to some extent, uh, when we understand our position, much less complicated than that. Um, unfortunately, most people, not only are they absorbed in this, to go back to today's verse, atyahara, atyahara. Atyahara means um, to eat, eating. People are very much after the words. Atya, ah, ah, where ah, ah, ati means more or something. Ahara means, uh, usually it refers to eating, uh, but it can, or boja, eating, boja, enjoying, enjoying, uh, too much enjoyment. The, the actual meaning of the word in this verse, particularly different than the first verse of nectar instruction, where we controlling it with tongue. In this case, the word boja refer, refers to any kind of unnecessary or extensive sense gratification beyond what is required, motion. Um, so the living entities are very busy trying to extend their ahara or their sense gratification, not just through eating, um, you know, more and more or whatever it is, too much eating or too much collecting of funds. It can also refer to people unnecessary, not just on the external, but on the subtle also, the knowledge, too much knowledge, um, even in Mayavad philosophy can fall into that category, Mahara, Vatihara, uh, it, it's not constitutional, it's mixed, or it's completely material. So Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, are also can fall within this category of Vatihara, and we're very keen on especially mystic powers, so many, and all kinds of, that's why devotion services, and Yavilasitash, you know, where it's devoid of all these other um, objectives for material gain or for liberation or for mystic powers or any other um, goal. It's only goal of devotional services to satisfy Christian senses. That's pure devotional service. These other activities can be, can be seen as uh, contained within devotional service if they're connected to pure devotional service in of themselves and not. So if they're guided by pure devotee or by proper behavior, according to the Vedic system, uh, scriptural injunctions, etc., they can be seen as at least subcategories of Naimitika Dharma. Temporary, um, you know, say identities, temporary activities to help us to come to our, our real understanding. So in society, it's arranged like that. 
whereas in, in modern society, of course, it's not. Um, and people are encouraged to collect more, more, learn more and more, uh, work harder and harder, do this, do that, do this, do that. And for most people, if they've got any spiritual information, are also using the same, you could say, I, I, same kind of um, framework in their spiritual life. Try this, try that, try this, try that, do this, do that, feel this, feel that. Listen to the one you like, don't listen to the one you don't like. What, what does that mean? That means listen to one who satis sort of speaks in a way that satisfies your conditional uh, concepts of life. And on and on and on people go in this material and getting no actual ultimate solution, belief or perfection in their conscious, consciousness. Um, so collecting more than required. And that, what is what is required? Well, it goes back to the Isha Panishad, okay? Isha Vashtami Dhamma Sarva Mithi Charge of Uh What is that? I mean, everyone should know that everything that exists is the property of the Lord. Everything belongs to the Christian. And we should take that which is a lot of one's quota, as I said, according to one's um, the conditional, yes, one's conditional situation, everyone has a quota. We should take our quota uh, and not try to take that which belongs to others with our quotas. Not try to put people down or exploit people. But the world today is full of exploitations and uh, this example, actually speaking, countries trying to fight with each other over these principles, false identity and uh, so on and uh, exploiting other countries, exploiting other people, exploiting the animals, exploiting their own bodies, exploiting the nature. Exploitation is rampant in this modern day and age because people are lacking, they're lacking their ignorance, they're lacking knowledge of reality, they're lacking knowledge of the purpose of life, they're lacking knowledge of their own identity, they're lacking knowledge of the proprietor. Basically, they're in complete darkness of ignorance. And the ones in darkness of ignorance is the lowest it is lower than animal life, practically speaking. Darkness of ignorance. People have no light. They're not at all enlightened in spirituality. Even if they have some good material concepts in relative terms, they have very little, if any, spiritual understanding of the goal of human life. So it's not that one doesn't utilize the material energy. Some spiritual paths decline any contact, which is impossible. But they decline any contact with the material world in one sense. But those who are on the spiritual path, devotional path, they certainly don't. Those on the devotional path accept everything in this material world as an object of Krishna's pleasure. And they utilize it for Krishna's pleasure by finding out how to utilize our body, our mind, our words, the objects around us, whatever, our talents, everything in the service for the pleasure of Krishna. That's devotional service, that's the proper we could say utilization, just like the next subject, actually, uh, prayasas over endeavoring for material objects. The tendency is that when we create a false objective, that we over and we endeavor and we never stop, we're determined to achieve, like a Ranyakashi Kuru Ravan, something, some material endeavor, which is our undoing. And we work so hard, the greed, tremendous greed, lolium is another word mentioned in this verse. And it's, greed for the material world. All these things can be favorable in devotion and service. Um, all they, they can all be favorable, like collecting. You know, if we, if we, we have some and other things come along, we use them in Christian service. That doesn't come under the, under the label of Atyahara. Knowledge used in Christian service is not Atyahara. Any kind of talent used in Christian service is not Atyahara. But if we use it in our own service more than required to keep body and mind together, uh, which is the instruction of Isha Panisha, we can just take that which is required and not more than what's required. We can learn from animals in this regard. They don't, and then some do, like squirrels, but that's a seasonal factor. It's not anything more than necessity, bears and squirrels. They generally don't hoard. They take what they need, depending on nature. So in human life, we don't. We want more and more and more. We're never satisfied. That's at your heart. We're constantly trying to accumulate more and more. And then we become more and more greedy and greedy lowly. We become greedy for devotional service. We can transform that tendency. In fact, it's the price of pure devotional service is one's greed to obtain it. 
and the, the similarly patient people are extremely greedy in the material world, aside from the fact that karma comes along and thus has its limits. But other than that, you have to be quite greedy to obtain things in this material world over and above, you know, see what normally comes its way. And um, people are very, very de determined to attain their goal. In the material world, we can call it determination, or we can call it greed in, in specific terms of what they're trying to achieve. Uh, they're very greedy for results, they're very greedy for fame, they're very greedy for wealth, or whatever it may be. They're very greedy for it, and they're never satisfied. Living it burns like fire, by the way, Gita Krishna says it burns like fire. The more we feed it, the more it becomes unsatisfied, it just burns more and more and more. Um, so greed and devotional service can have its beneficial factor, but most people unfortunately do not know this. And they, their solution to life's problems is to get more, to find more ways of increasing our entanglement or our uh, uh, op opportunities for sense gratification in this world more and more. Um, just pray us yeah, unnecessary. So this, this um, collecting more or needing to eat more, even, you know, when you say eating more, Bhaktivinoda you know, says this is the real meaning of this verb, verb. Word is not so much eating so much because that's already mentioned in the first verse in terms of the tongue, controlling the urge of the tongue, directly meaning eating. And probably got an extensive explanation of what, how to counter that, how to deal with that pushing sense. So it's more in terms of the generalization in this verse of seeing everything is an object of my pleasure and I should get more and more and more. So then one endeavors more and more prayash, over endeavoring, over endeavoring for much more than we need to survive. This is said that one should take me that Nashta Prasha, is that the verse? Nashta Prasha, what do you say now? I should only take that which is required for the maintenance of one, one's uh, body and soul, one's life in this material world, and not take more. We should use our extra energy for spiritual advancement, that's the point. The main point is that we don't waste our time over endeavoring. Sometimes devotees get caught in this trap, especially when they're doing business. Yeah, I'm gonna make a billions of dollars for Krishna, but right now I can't really do any service for Krishna because I'm building up my business or doing this, studying or something. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, that's not the principle. Um, and Prabhupada says here, it's a very nice, very nice statement, sure. Um, by God's arrangement, anyone in any part of the world can live very peacefully if he has some land and a milk cow. Uh, not very common these days. There is no need of man to move from one place to another to earn a livelihood. You can see this is quite common also. Sometimes we drive, even in driving, sometimes we're in the same city, we have to drive an hour or two to get to work. So much traffic, it's very natural, natural situation. Work is where you are. You don't have to spend a half of your day just traveling back and forth. And the other half of your work is to pay for traveling back and forth to get a car, to pay this, that, and the other. And the children, you have to take them to school five miles away. Um, everything will be done locally. Very simple. Well, for what Papa said, um, basically, yeah. For one can produce food grains locally and get milk from cows. It's the basis of society. Grow one's own food and milk from cows. Very simple living. Baba wanted that. He wanted, if you look at his constitution for Islam, we'll see that many of these points are really quite a simple, simple lifestyle, a uh, place where people can come and remember Krishna, the kind of communities where you know, they can come and, and live and work and simply live there. Krishna at the center to educate people, in the standards of spiritual, spiritual standards, uh, to counteract the disunity, disharmony in society, bring peace and unity in society, and so on. Many things related to this were in Prabhupada's constitution. One of the ones which didn't make it in the constitution was to create one shrine. It was in his original document, but that was a sub subsection of the document, and they didn't come in the, in the final presentation quite the same way. Um, I can solve all economic problems. So higher intelligence, fortunately. So what is the use of our higher intelligence? It's not for material development. 
And they say that people were very primitive even in India because where's the sign of advancement? We don't see, we don't find. People didn't waste their time on building unnecessary material buildings. They lived very simply with nature's gifts. They didn't, they weren't sentimentally attached to the body. So the bodies were burned. They didn't leave, you know, because great souls were buried. But generally speaking, people with bodies were burned. They lived in simple, simple dwellings and they didn't want to waste their time with modern technology, although they had their own form of subtle technologies, mantras and so on, to produce various effects. But they didn't waste their time, as we do nowadays, or spend their time on unending pursuits to try to increase the fever of material existence. Everything was designed to extinguish the blazing fire of material existence um, and come to a spiritual platform. Um, and they would simple, simple, just maintain yourself with what you need. And uh, whoops, can you ask me to get quiet out there, please? Uh, <laughs> yes. So it's a little bit um, hmm, on prayas. Actually, how prayas is so. Pujapa, Pujapa. Okay, here's a little bit before we go on to Pajapa. Baba says, if you're endeavor, prayas. Prayas can also mean endeavor. It can mean you know, over endeavor, but it's just basically endeavor itself. There has to be endeavor to achieve anything, even in devotional service. Prayas has to be there. It's not just, I mean, is there an over endeavor in devotional service? Yes, there is. If our endeavor or activities are actually uh, causing us to become more inclined towards material life, uh, less inclined towards hearing and chanting, or they're causing, you know, and they're not helping us to awaken mood, the mood of devotional service or good qualities, etc. Then we have to question ourselves. Maybe one of the reasons, maybe over there, um, it may, maybe we're wrongly situated. We're trying to achieve it anyway, or maybe we're, you know, we got other motivations and we're determined to show us. I can, I can do it, so on and so forth. Maybe it can be one aspect of over endeavoring, such as that our health is threatened, for instance, uh, mentally or physically, or it's disturbing other, other, other devotees or other living entities. We may be over endeavoring in that sense, maybe knowingly or unknowingly, with motivation or without motivation. Sometimes it can be um, seen even in devotional service. But a prayas has to be there, endeavor has to be there. But this Baba describes enthusiasm as acting with intelligence, not just acting, but with intelligence too. Intelligence has to be has to be um, applied as to what is favorable and what is unfavorable, what is effective and what is not. You know, we're not just on the platform of prayers, it's prayers and shreyas. Prayers means immediate results, shreyas means long term. So these things are also you know, because of our condition, we get lost sometimes. But oftentimes, we're just aiming at prayers without understanding the long term, what is beneficial in the long term stress. There's one thing we go through, like children growing up. So these, these shortcomings, maybe there's sometimes over and down. We, we should learn from our mistakes, so to speak, and learn from others who have experience. Um, and better to learn from others, we'll learn from hearing. But usually we have to learn from our own experiences. So sometimes we do over endeavor and we do actually try to aim at prayers or temporary, um, temporary gain and not really understand what is long term beneficial. So we get something immediately instant, instant potato. One minute you get mashed potato, you just put the packet of powder in the boiling water and hey presto, you've got mashed potato. Just throw some butter in, it tastes as good as old as months. But it's not really the long-term beneficial health wise. It's not at all good for one. Um, and even subtly, and so many ill effects come from these type of shortcuts we try to make. Um, so the main thing is we should, in prayas, we should, in, we should avoid mundane endeavor. We, the, on the spiritual path, there's also consideration, but the main consideration, we can endeavor to collect for Krishna. We can endeavor to serve for Krishna. We can endeavor to chant more, we can endeavor to build temples, we can endeavor to do whatever it is we're doing. At least it's in the right direction. Maybe the intelligence is not quite there, but at least it's in the right direction. But the main thing that St. Prabhupada said we should avoid is the endeavor for mundane 
endeavor. Avoid that. To retain mundane things, things which are not, they're more based upon our own, what I want, what we want, what our society wants. And there's a degree of that when we're working in society. Obviously, that's there. We have, in a society where that's the principle. So we have to work and we have to work according to our situation and to work hard sometimes. But the goal is not mundane endeavor. The goal is necessity and whatever excess is there to serve Krishna. There's a, sin, there's a line of necessity. We shouldn't take that, which is more than what we need, which is live a healthful life uh, and not work hard for things which we don't really need. We may say, I need to, I want to collect more for Krishna's service. Then so it's fine. You know, if it's our position, we're rightly situated, you can justify that to some extent, but not to the extent that actually impedes our spiritual practices or impedes our health or disturbs others, our family or whatever it may be. Um, so there's a balance there. Um, another impediment probably then goes on to the third one, which is often in many cases, maybe this is the most talked about, I don't know, Prajalpa. Prajalpa, usually we define Prajalpa as useless idle talk. But Prajalpa is a big subject. In fact, Prajalpa or Jalpa simply means to, to speak. Topics, discussion. It doesn't necessarily mean um, you know, unnecessary talk. Although most of the talk which we expose to or which we indulge in, in this world is almost exclusively um, unnecessary or detrimental. Of course, talks regarding one's occupation are required, but only as much as necessary. Pujapa is a very big topic, um, a big subject matter. We understand the other side of it to try to utilize the tendency to speak um, in a positive way, um, talking about Krishna. Uh, Pujapa also includes, um, you say, so many uh, expressions of our desire to exploit this world um, in every every way, trying to impress people uh, just with our knowledge, trying to argue, debate, um, all sorts of different platforms where people interact through speaking. Pajapa is it uh, entangles the living entity in this material world. It's um, according to Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Um, according to Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, through his interaction with Lord Chaitanya, there are three things to be avoided for renunciation. Um, and one of them is to eat too much. And another is to dress too fashionably. But the worst is to speak uh, nonsense, unnecessary talk, because that affects everyone. So this Pajapa, when not directed towards Krishna, is very destructive very misleading. Um, people's lives are based on it, what they've heard, what they speak and hear, and it's very difficult to change. It's a very um, hard one to overcome, only in good association and practice. It may be possible for, for that to be uh, renovated or changed. Now, I'm going to um, stop there because we're, only, we're not even halfway through. We haven't finished the job, but there's a lot of subject matter. A lot of topics, a lot of thoughts. I'm going to ask if anyone would like to ask any questions uh, before we proceed um, in deeper into this verse and the topics and the subjects therein. So if anyone would like to ask any questions, please do in the comments. I will try to expand or discuss further. Okay, here's one. Um, uh, um, it's from Gauri Das Prabhu in the UK to everyone. Um, boom, 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 boom. Sometimes we seem to be pushed into a situation of over endeavoring for maintaining the livelihood. What would that be owing to any of the past karma or one's own misguided life choices? Everything's related. Um, it is, a, as we've touched upon, the fact that the society we live in is very um, imbalanced and um, objectively, wrongly directed. So there is this environmental push all around us. And then we get the family push because they're also in the same environment and they're educated in this, uh, uh, you know, abnormal situation of achievement, ambition, study more, get more, do more, work harder, 
make it, become somebody, etc., etc. So, um, yeah, so we're surrounded by the family that also may push us intensely. To a certain extent, we can learn from Prabhupada's life, and we can may not, and we can't imitate it. We can see even Prabhupada was faced with this as a Grihastha. He was faced with this so much of his energy in un- maintaining family, which is required, but it, sometimes it goes a bit overboard because of the family situation requires more, both society and family. And then on the other side, which is more point you're mentioning our own karma yes it is related to something we've got to go through human life is not just um a life of you know as we said inquiry about the nature of the absolute truth we can see that otherwise we'd be doing that all the time it's not it's also learning lessons so our, uh, through what appears to be karma is not karma Prabhupada describes, it's not Prabhupada directly, but he does describe this in other places, but in the 10th canto of Bhagavatam, um, which was the 14th chapter, which are not translated directly by Prabhupada, but the commentary there, quoting our acharyas, describes how when a devotee appears in these situations, it's not exactly karma. It appears like karma, but it's Krishna's arrangement. He's allowing these situations to evolve or to be there for a devotee, depending on our sincerity. Um, different situations are, are, are there, allowed by Krishna, and to teach us a lesson, so to help to release us from the very cause of our being in these situations, so we actually lose all taste for material endeavor, for prayas. We lose all taste, atyaharam, for accumulation and enjoyment within the circle of material existence. This is the idea for a devotee may become frustrated sometimes maybe what but it doesn't have to be sometimes it can be you know just simply an opportunity to increase one's service but in many cases it becomes quite frustrating we have very little time for anything else we're running around and eventually we realize and so many examples may be there of this but uh, you know it's a lesson to be learned why am i wasting my life endeavoring for so many things and what is it to show at the end of it all because we don't prematurely act on that necessarily at all. But it's a lesson which we really have to learn. It's a lesson in becoming to near a picture to become completely detached from this material endeavor uh, and the consequent results of being uh, addicted to material endeavor. So it's a learning lesson. And Krishna arranges that. We listen to him. We still carry on with our service or our duties, etc. But our consciousness will change once we start to see it in relation. This is something I have to learn. Um, hold on, let me finish that one. Misguided life choices. Well, that's, of course, <laughs> we hope that we're not continue to make misguided life choices. We, people will say you, you made a misguided life choice if you, if you take to Krishna consciousness, naturally. Or especially if you give up one's career or give up one's occupation or give up one's studies, etc. They say, this is crazy. And it might be crazy if we're not ready for that yet. But in principle, um, it's not crazy. In principle, we, we may continue to do them. And I should karma palam karyam karma karodhiya so sanyasa chiyogi chakriya. We may continue to do those activities, but not being attached to the results or the effects therein. Um, Krishna explains. Um, or we may not. It depends on the situation. That's something we'll have to individually discuss. But in principle, it's meant for learning our lessons so we don't continue to plan and act in a way to continue our sojourn in this material world. So it's not like there's some opposition party, you know, attacking, trying to get rid of Krishna shortly. And as some empiric philosophy, some people may think, it's not like that. It's uh, actually nothing, even the, even the non devotional things going on are allowed by Krishna ultimately under his control. He's just reciprocating with people accordingly, reciprocating with us also, putting us in situations so we actually surrender to help us on our path and surrender. Um, okay, the next one. So we should try to make our choices, life choices now, um, in, in the sense of in relationship with Guru Shastra and Sadhu, not just in relation to the immediate environment or our particular circumstances that we're in or our conditional natures, et cetera, that obviously is there, but we should start to more and more try to see things in the light of, of, of Shastra Guru and Sadhu.
Uh, next one, it happens to me a lot after a day full of service, my mind demands some relaxation, some pajapa, some mundane reading videos, how to get rid of this. And again, another unfortunate consequence of our modern society, but not by chance we're in there because we're in there. We're getting what we got. It's not we take responsibility for that. Association, tendency is okay. It's interesting you should say that. Um, I don't know how many... Aspiring devotees have uh, uh, different kinds of, whether it's Pajalpa or whether it's useless endeavor for other things, you know, watching some movies, which is a kind of Pajalpa also, watching some sport or watching some this or that. New, even news can be Pajalpa. Watching the news now, everyone, some billions of people tuned into the television to see who has won the election in America. So they say, there are billions of people watching a lot of day. Pajapa, but some of it is necessary. There's a room for necessary talking, just like at work we mentioned, you talk to people according to you know, necessity, but not with affection for it. So sometimes with uh, politics, you need to know what's going on or mundane news occasionally, you may need to what's going on for the sake of your existence in this world or preaching sometimes, but not more than necessary, not with, oh, that's nice, let me, let me. Let me get into that. So what you're saying here seems to be a bit, a bit on the other side, a bit more on the Pajalpa side, a bit more on the um, Bojana side, the Atyahara side. Sounds like it. And you maybe just be very humble there and just, just sort of like, you know, putting yourself in a humble position. But whatever it is, this tendency is there. In Vedic society, rehashed the life was there. Um, to some extent, to say large, and an ending extent, but to some extent, there was some facilitating for the need. Recreation, Krishna says, one who's moderate or one who's balanced in their work and their recreation and so on and so forth, eating and what have you, uh, can attain freedom from the, you know, the pangs of, of the suffering of this world. So there's an element of need there. So we have to replace this tendency, which is common, of going to a mundane book, or watching a mundane video, or talking mundane, etc. We have to replace it with something better, something more exciting, something more, uh, say, Krishna conscious, something more attractive. Festivals, devotees at the end of the day, maybe some some kind of relaxation is there. I, I don't know exactly. You're, I know where you are. You're in Delhi, but I don't know what you do in Delhi. But in some places, devotees they may have, you know. Um, I mean, I see sometimes brahmacharis, they have a fight with each other. I don't mean a fight in terms of negatively, but, you know, just a bit of exercise and then something like that, or they just relax and they just discuss some, you know, pastimes, like a Krishna book or whatever, something, something is there. Um, we need a bit of, of uh, you know, let's say, relaxation sometimes. I don't know, different things that the boys may do um, to feel that. Maybe uh, the shot of, of course, is always there. Um, what else is there? I don't know. Good kirtan at the end of the day is always a wonderful way to end the day. I'll say end the day, but to have at the end of the day. And then Krishna book reading with hot milk. We used to do that. And the boys would talk a little bit, maybe recounting some experiences you've had during the day of devotional service and so on. Something or another is talking about the Holy Dharm or watching a video about the Holy Dharm, some nice video about Krishna consciousness or something, reading the Lilam Vita, something a bit more relaxing, not just kind of like something imposing or being imposed upon, but something more relaxing. Maybe required sometimes just to settle down until we're more fixed in our devotional service. Uh, as we don't have a Varnashram environment. I, when I, was, I remember when I was in Ekachakra, Chakra Gram a long time ago, 30, 40 years ago. I haven't been since. At that time, they had no electricity at all. There was no Iskong temple. Um, and there was nobody. It was like quiet. As soon as the sun went down, it was dark. Just a few lamps, a few night, night what do you call these flies at night? They give a little light, little, like little stars. And it was amazing. Everything went silent. There was no vehicle, nothing. Everything went silent. 
And then about seven o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock, Kirtan began, Bhajan. And all the villagers come to the temple for Bhajan for like hours, hours just Bhajan. And then everyone go back and maybe they've already taken their dinner or not, I don't know, but they go back home and when the sun rises, they all appear again. Some appear earlier for puja and this and that. Very simple, very nice atmosphere all together. Uh, chanting, old, young, whatever, everyone chanting together in the bhajans. And it's very, very nice. Sing some bhajans. You know, sing some of these wonderful bhajans from the songbook at night. That's what we used to do. It was the program when I joined. The last program on the agenda was half an hour of bhajan. Singing the various songs of Narutam and Bhaktivino Thakur. Wonderful way to um, you know, say wind down at the end of the day. Very wonderful. Someone I try to spiritualize this need. It may be a need. You may have had a hard day. And then sometimes we carry on till midnight with a hard day. Still trying to unwrangle the hard day because we're in such an unnatural, complicated situation. So it's like the fighters, they go to war. And during the day, they fight all day. And they come back at home. They'd have social events at night. That's thing maybe a little bit mundane, a little mixed in their case. But for divorce, it has to be something like that, some kind of social thing at night. Maybe going down, maybe something. Evening program was there. We hear and chant, relax, hearing and chanting, and hear and chant bhajans, and reading Krishna book, taking a prasad together. Oh, did it say hot milk, sweet for those who are health, health conscious. Milk should be very sweet, Prabhupada said. <laughs> Hot and sweet, <laughs> we may not be able to take that. But it's so soothing, it's so pleasing, so pleasing. So it's prasadam, it's so wonderful. Okay, thank you for that. How to get rid of this, pray, pray to get rid of it. And uh, try to replace it with something else. Pray and endeavor, probably. So, so try to replace it with something else. It's not enough just to not do it. We have to replace it. <laughs> Sometimes we just say, not do it. And two days later, we're doing it again. <laughs> we have to replace it. Eventually, of course, it's a long process. That one. Krishna will teach us a lesson. Better we take a quicker process of praying and replacing it with something else. Balancing our lives nicely. Anything else on the screen? Here's something else. Uh, so friend, also from Delhi, um, sometimes when health, health is low and sometimes feeling low, so mind starts rebelling. Tell me about it. So it starts thinking about negative things, said, said so. It's a great struggle, especially when not with mind, like-minded devotees. What do we mean like-minded devotees who have a, uh, a struggle, of course, it is. <laughs> So we, I think we mean devotees who are maybe a little bit more uh, mature or not so stir disturbed. Yes, his mind is disturbed. In the previous verse, it talked about the pushings of the mind, uh, constantly pushing of the mind. So what do we do with that? Let's, let's see. Sometimes, okay, it's specific. It's when the house is down a bit, we're a bit low. That's the supposed to be um, the advantage of Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. Association of devotees. We're all in a boat. It's not that we're any of us in real health, and it's not that we're, any of us are not low. We're all in the boat together, different degrees, different, relatively speaking, different degrees of health, different degrees of consciousness, etc. Are there, but we're all in the basic same boat. And as much as possible, we're here to try to help each other. Papa created this movement. Krishna consciousness is already there, but he spread it in the form of ISKCON to try to facilitate this, to help us to come out of low, to come out of ill health. And ill health is not just the physical aspect, it's how we relate to the health. Um, we may have good health and not be in good consciousness. So he created a society, a Krishna conscious society known as ISKCON, it's already there. Society is always there, Krishna consciousness, but he specifically, to provide this institutionally speaking facility for, for, for persons <clears throat> coming from a 
condition, trouble, background, any background, talking of this one, um, so they could get some environmental relief, creating an environment where they can feel more peaceful and more protected and more sheltered at the same time so that they can become a little bit spiritually attracted. Because when we're spiritually attracted, even and we see in the material world, people who are very absorbed in one particular thing become oblivious or not concerned about the pain or the suffering from another source. A mother with her child, oftentimes she may have some very serious problems of her own, but she puts that all aside for the service of her child. So as we practice devotional service, even though the, due to whatever karma or whatever we come across, we have a certain type of mindset, a certain type of negativity, a certain type of depression or health condition or whatever it may be. That may be there, but the more we can cultivate, there are many devotees in this movement that have serious health issues, but they're extremely Krishna conscious. They've risen above these conditional situations which can depress us, which can bring us down. For whatever reason, maybe they're all advanced, but whatever reason it is, they've shown us that we can rise above it and be very, very positive, extremely positive. Although there's cause of, some, of negativity, they've risen above it. They've risen above that. So how? It's like I was reading yesterday or the was saying, what's the use of, of learning verses? And they were saying, because they, the verses then will be in the mind. Uh, instead of like when you sit back, you start thinking of, you know, goodness knows what, some nonsense or something. The, the, the verse will be reverberate, reverberating in your mind. And especially when you're in this type of situation, you, you, you're expressing, you get depressed or whatever negative or something certain verses which can inspire you not to become affected the, the shastra is not just something we learn it is a power force it is powerful and when we associate with shastra it has a powerful effect to dis defeat ignorance to destroy our, our depression to destroy our doubts etc so krishna says that in gita hmm? With knowledge, you destroy your doubts. So this knowledge, we have to have the right knowledge. So uh, remembering verses, remembering, you know, whatever, something or another. Try to see things in relationship with Krishna and not just relatively in relationship to the material experience. But we have to learn, or if we want to, we, we can try to learn to see things in relationship with Krishna. How Krishna is very merciful, releasing me from my concept that I'm the controller, that I'm the enjoyer, I am the proprietor, or various other independent ideas, releasing us, sometimes frustrating us, sometimes we go through this and that, we want to, Krishna knows what's good, what we need to go through in order to let go of our attachments, or the causes of our being in this material world. He knows. But the devotees, our duty is to try to help others. No, we're not God, we're not Jesus Christ. But we do what we can to encourage other devotees by our own example, by our presence, etc. Positive, to be positive. And of course, if we can just, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yesterday morning I had that experience, I was feeling a bit like nowhere. Suddenly I started chanting loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. The consciousness changed a little bit. Very small, maybe a little bit. So sometimes it just requires hearing. Even Gandhi said himself, whenever I feel low and down, I pick up the Bhagavad Gita and I read a verse and immediately relieved of his negativity or his ignorance. Depression is, is a symptom of ignorance. Due to frustrated passion, we become depressed. So when we're not getting what we want, be it, you know, because we have these. <coughs> false concept or false understanding of identity of who we are. We don't judge the your service by the externals. We judge it by how much we're depending on Krishna. So if externals are negative and that, that causes a turn to Krishna, that's good. Queen Gundi Bray made these difficulties happen again and again. Because you have no choice but to turn to you. So if everything's going great outside, the tendency is we take it for granted and we don't necessarily feel grateful to Krishna or feel, turn to Krishna. You know, we, we, we kind of almost get, we can get proud sometimes. 
pride is a major obstacle, which will come up in the next session. But um, in this terms, if that difficulty helps us to turn to Krishna, that's the thing. Because not the result of, of our turn to Krishna in terms of externals, but the fact that we're turning to Krishna is actually the success. That's our business. Because we're not depressed, the soul is not depressed. That depression is being experienced on the mental plane as a result of physical frustrations of various kinds. So, um, yeah, if it helps us to turn to Krishna, it's not all bad. So try to remember that. Try to see when these difficulties come to turn towards Krishna, to chant the holy names of Krishna, to associate with devotees, to pray. So it can be a good thing. It can be a, not necessarily have to be negative. So try to deal with it positively. I remember hearing an instruction from one of the Acharyas not to try to enjoy the holy name, as this is the path that will take us to hell. How do we understand this? So you could say an extreme, the extreme of that mentality, and what it means to enjoy, to utilize the holy name for our own ulterior motives, is the meaning, one meaning of this. To utilize the holy name to advertise oneself um, as an advanced devotee or a good singer, to make money out of chanting the holy name, to get followers out of chanting the holy name. Um, is, these are heavier ones. Um, to cheat people um, in various ways, sometimes to get women um, and so on. Women, name, fame, followers, wealth, all these various factors to cover over one's um, ulterior motives by one's you know, so-called kirtan, etc., etc. Various kinds of motivations may be involved. And on the kind of the, you could say, again, it's the attitude more than the actual statement itself, the attitude. So somebody may come to Krishna consciousness. What do you say? What do you say? Chant and be happy. We don't tell people, chant and don't be happy. It wouldn't be a very attractive proposal. Chant and be miserable, okay? Because people may laugh. I um, mean, maybe a reverse psychology, but we expect that happiness is there because there has to be children. You have to give them a sweet. In other words, take this horrible tasting medicine. Uh, the child will scream and cry and try to avoid it. Yeah, take this nice, take this nice juice. It's very sweet. Inside is the medicine. So in the beginning, maybe like that, you know. It may not be very, hey, they say, this chanting, I feel so good. Ah, I really enjoy this chanting. But there's no real devotion there as such. It's the mercy of the Lord, the hand of the Lord coming in the form of Nam Prabhu. And people are starting to become attracted. So the voice also, are naturally, there's a pleasure there. And it's not the... We're trying to, but there's more, a little bit more advanced. We're not chanting just because we want it. And when we don't feel good, we don't chant. That's the result of that type of chanting. It's not as bad as the ulterior motive chanting, the, the cheating chanting. That comes up later in our talks also on this verse of Bhagavad Gita, of nectar of instruction. But it's, uh, it's just a mundane, ignorant type of uh, understanding. We, well, we have to have understanding of the nature of the holy name if we want to rise beyond these, let's say, mixed, mixed relationships. So uh, it's, it's but it, in the right association, just like you go to a kirtan mela, if you know what that is, a gra group of devotees coming together to do prolonged chanting together, festival of the holy name or whatever you call it. And uh, perhaps we've all got different motivations when we go there. One person's thinking I'm just, I hope that I can become purified by the association of devotees and become absorbed in chanting the holy names. Very nice. I mean, definitely a little bit mature. Another person is thinking, oh, my favorite kirtan is there. I'm going to go. Okay, not bad. It may not be completely pure with proper understanding, but it's still there going. It's good. And others go in there. If they don't let me play my djembe, I'm going to leave. 
I'm going to go there and show how good I am at playing the djembe or the saxophone or how good uh, whatever it is. And they're not so good. That's not so good. Another person is thinking, if I dress nicely and I have a very fancy hairstyle, I'm sure everyone will look at me and perhaps some of the girls would even be attracted towards me, etc. That's definitely not very good. Maybe I'll be on the video and everyone all over the world will see me with my smile and my hair and my dress and the way I move. What a speaker. Of course, they'll let me lead the kirtan. The way I sing with the latest alakars and the latest, you know, everything. And I, everything. So wonderful. Ah, <laughs> tune that no one's ever heard. I'll rock the world with my latest CD in a moment and I'll become famous. Not very good at all. Not at all good. Yes, that's not at all kirtan. And so many, probably so many other varieties of kirtan out there. Ignorant kirtan, maybe purposeful and not mixing up the mantras, chanting against the acharya's directions and so on and so forth. All kinds of different varieties may be there. Trying to enjoy the holy name with me in the center. Kirtan means Krishna in the center, not me or you or anyone else. It's Krishna in the center. And so the more our kirtan is like that, then it's real kirtan. In the beginning, it's naturally going to be some mixtures, but if we're fortunate, we're in the association of devotees who are a little more advanced in their approach to chanting the holy name. This is a chance if we don't walk out, if they tell us to stop playing our jambay, please, because it's causing a disturbance to the kirtan, um, which sometimes we do, and I've seen that on quite a few occasions. Please, Prabhu, we, we can't, no one can hear the holy name. You're, you're beating your Punjabi 500 kilo drum so loud that no one can hear anything but you drum playing. And they just walk away. End of kirtan for them. Never really started. Because the motivation is me, 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 the way I like it. Devotional service is ultimately on the absolute platform. We could say like that is the way we like it, but it's actually the way Krishna likes it. So kirtan has to be performed in this way. And then the holy name will start to reciprocate, to purify us of all these motivations or immature motivations. Be they knowingly or unknowingly, they are still to be cleansed away. If they're knowingly, that's a very offensive chanting that will never lead to any really any good whatsoever. And as the Acharya said that can lead to hell because it's an offense, one's misleading others in the performance of kirtan, one's diverting others away from kirtan. This is the greatest offense. If it's just out of ignorance, we just don't know, that's something else. One can be rectified and purified. Everyone can be purified, but it, you know, it's got to be willing to take the medicine, so to speak, of chastisement sometimes, correction, frustration, not being recognized. That's Krishna's mercy, by the way. And we have to see it that if we don't, then we end up, you know, becoming proud and angry and envious, and critical and negative and this and that and so on and so forth. And certainly that's the pathway to hell. So it depends on the situation, the individual's motivation, and their, and their so called position, especially if one's in the position of leadership and one has this devious mentality. This is again going to come up in the Dharma Bhajis, the most unwanted in Jana Sangha, the next subject matter. Jana Sangha, the most unwanted association, is those who are claiming to be and they're not. In their heart of hearts, they're devious um, cheaters on the path in the name of. We hear about sahajas and this and that. Even Prabhupada says they can eventually become purified. There's another kind of even worse who are literally being accepted as being, you know, whatever. Uh, acharyas, leaders, and so on. This is a very, very dangerous situation. So I don't know if that helps at all. We try to cultivate this hum humility of, of knowing that my chanting is offensive. My chanting is, you know, not for Krishna, 
I'm really just chanting for myself, Krishna, dear, dear, dear devotees, please help me. I'm such a neophyte. I have not known my devotional chanting is totally aparad. It's not even namabhas. This type of mentality evokes the mercy of the Vaishnavas and the holy name. And we're genuine. Not, that can also be cheating. We're just saying that to get attention and to become you know, objects of you know, other people's attention and so on and so forth. Uh, we certainly are objects of their mercy, but it's, it's, it's not an external thing. It's when internally we feel repentant about our fallen or our, um, you know, their offensive behavioral mentality, then we become objects of mercy. Otherwise, it's, mercy may come in a different way that we become frustrated or ignored and so on and so forth. Another form of mercy, but not the one we're looking for. And until we learn a lesson that will continue ad infinitum, frustration, and so on and so forth. Um, I remember hearing, and that's the one we just said, Hare Krishna. Like, I don't know if there are any more. Someone's typing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, I should have thought that. So it says typing. Uh, I don't know if they're typing or not. No, maybe not. So it's time now for 12.40. No, I don't know what time you've got. 11.45 here. But uh, I guess it's time for Kirtan. And uh, thank you all very much. And we'll continue with the same verse next week. It's a beautiful verse. Sweet meanings. Next week we'll deal a little bit more, Krishna wills that is, with uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's commentary on this verse. We've only covered half the topics anyway, and we'll finish that and then we're into Bhaktivinoda's commentary. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Goranga, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Goranga, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Goranga, Rama Rama, Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare R
Hare Krishna go. Krishna Krishna go. Hare Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Hare Krishna go. Hare Krishna go. Krishna Hare Hare. Ram Hare Ram. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Nam Sankirtanam Ki Jai Brihat Madanga Ki Jai Lord Chaitanya's Hare Nam Sankirtanam Ki Jai Go pray on a knee O glorious to the assembled devotees O glorious to Sri Guru and Sri Guranga Hare Krishna Merci Boko Karima Kasi Pasibo uh, what are we else are we from over there? I don't know. Dandavat. Um, yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you all very, very much. Okay, Hare Bo! Hare Bo! Hare Bo! Fiji on the screen, and England and Scotland and Latvia and, and Australia, Malaysia, Germany, and so many places are there. Hare Krishna. Hare Bow! 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 Oh, glorious to Srila Prabhupada. See you soon. I think when's our next one? We have one Thursday. I don't know if we have another one. I don't know. We'll let. Rasi Kananda Prabhu, thank you. We'll let everybody know. Ne otherwise, next Saturday. Don't forget, this is Kartik. More chanting and hearing. Daddy, I want to put you on your phone. Jai, Hari Ball. Hari Ball, Hari Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Hari Ball. Hari Ball.